So then guys, the new MacBook Pro with the M5 chip is here. Lots of us reviewers out there are testing this out and we're saying it's a fantastic device for $1,599 US dollars. But here is the thing. Did you know that the MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro inside of it, if you went to Apple Shop, scroll down to the refurbished section, then navigate yourself to an M4 Pro MacBook Pro, you can actually pick this up for just $100 more, 1,699 US dollars. Now, the thing is with a refurbished product from Apple, what they generally do is that if you've got something what is a refurbished item, they change out so many bits and pieces. They give you a brand new battery. They give you a brand new logic board if it's needed. If any of the keyboard is scratched or anything like this, they will change that out. Basically, essentially, they make the refurbished like a brand new MacBook Pro and they also give you a year standard Apple warranty and you can sign up to Apple Care all over again, literally like a brand new MacBook Pro. So here is the question then. What's the point in buying an M5 MacBook Pro if for $100 more you can buy yourself the M4 MacBook Pro and is it worth doing this? Well, I've done a load of different sort of benchmarks to help you guys out to work out is it actually worth buying a refurbished M4 MacBook Pro or the M4 Pro MacBook Pro I should say or the M5 model? Well, let's take a look and let's begin first of all then with Geekbench 6 single core performance. And as you can see right here, the M5 is definitely leaps and bounds ahead. Now, as we always know, is that single core performance is essentially around the same now for every single chip that comes out. It's around about the same score. It might be slightly higher for say the Pro and Maxes and even the Ultra chips that they exist for that. So yeah, they might be slightly higher, but generally speaking, each generation, it goes up. And we can definitely see here on single core performance that M5 beats out the M4 Pro. But if you look, like I said, look at the M4 score, look at the M4 Pro score, you can see they're literally identical. It's the same thing with the M3 and also the same thing with the M3 Pro. They're literally identical. So they essentially are the same cores that you've got there. But what happens if we switch over to say multi-core performance? How does the M5 compare to the M4 Pro there? Well, let's take a look. Well, we can see that the M4 Pro is definitely better. And personally, in my opinion, when you're getting a score of 20,200 compared to 17,900 here, yeah, for $100 straight away, just in Geekbench kind of scoring here, if you're gonna do CPU intensive kind of task, you're gonna get a better machine here just by spending that heck extra $100 more. But what most interesting to see is just have a look at the difference that we've even got, say, between M4 to M5 and even the M3. Pro. This is really interesting to see. But some of you guys say Geekbench doesn't give the true representation of multi-core performance. So I've also ran Cinebench. So let's have a look at Cinebench then in multi-core performance then and see what that gave us. And as we can see here, we do have a big difference again. Look at this, the M4 Pro absolutely thrashes the M5 MacBook Pro. So this is absolutely unbelievable what we got here. We've got 1,647 compared to 1,135. And what I also forgot to say to you guys at the beginning of this video is that this is the M4 Pro here, what is the 12 core version of this. So this is the one what's made up of four efficiency cores and eight performance cores, where inside of this machine that we've got right here, we've got six efficiency cores, that's so two more, and we've also got inside of this four performance cores. So that is a big difference straight away, way more performance cores. So this is probably why in multi-core performance, it is leaps and bounds ahead there. But what happens if we try out some other bits and pieces too? Let's have a look then say at graphical kind of performance. So let's have a look then to see if I did a Blender export or the one of the rendering of the BMW, let's see what happens here. Well, what you've got to take note of is that obviously lower is better, but just have a look what happens. Because of the GPU cores inside of the M4 Pro, there are far more of them inside of this. 
So we're talking about 16 core GPU compared to the 10 inside the M5. You can see that obviously the M4 Pro definitely is faster here. But what is quite interesting to see is how close it is to say the M3 Pro. It's only slightly slower there. But again, my point is the M4 Pro, the difference that you're getting here for the sake of $100 is definitely better. But then if you were to do something a bit more kind of graphics intense in a different type of way, let's say if we were playing a game, let's say we we're playing Cyberpunk 2077, what would happen here in this situation? Let's take a look. Well, what I've done is I ran the benchmark in the actual game. We've done two different scenarios here. We've done 1080p metal FX quality, and I've also ran it at 1200p native with no extras. So this is no metal FX, no extra frames per second, no kind of scaling, nothing like that whatsoever. And you can see the differences that we are getting right here. What is quite impressive to see is how far the M5 has actually caught up with gaming. It's 81 frames per second with that Metal FX quality on compared to the M4 Pro at 84. This is super close. And then obviously if we did that other type of one, the 1200p native with no extras whatsoever, we're talking one frames per second. 44 to 45 frames per second. But then when you compare it to say the likes of the M4, you can even see the M4 Pro and the M5 is also way out in front here. So that one was quite interesting to see because obviously they were very similar inside of Cyberpunk 2077. And like I said, we do have the likes of a 16 core GPU in here, but we've only got a 10 core in here. But do remember the M5 chip does have the likes of those new kind of AI bits and pieces built into the likes of the GPU cores to actually help that out there. So, you know, those accelerators are probably doing a good job in helping that out. It's going to make me wonder what M5 Pro is going to be like, though, if the M5 normal is almost as good in gaming as the likes of the M4 Pro. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see there. But what was if we ran a actual task that was a bit more CPU intensive? So what I've decided to do is run the likes of Xcode. And again, this is a compile test that I've done and lower is better here, which means it's faster. And you can see then again, the difference what we've got here. You can see that obviously having those more performance cores and less efficiency cores in the M4 Pro, it is way faster what we've got right here. It does this test in 92 seconds with the same one completed on the likes of the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an M5 in it. That did it in 139 seconds. Again, the M4 Pro wins out here in this scenario. But what is quite interesting to see is that with the CPU compared to even last year's M4, there's really not much in it. So what I'd be saying here is that for CPU intense tasks like an Xcode, for example, really, if you've got an M4 MacBook Pro or you can find one for cheap now, yeah, buy that over the M5 for this. But then something else you might be asking about is what about, say, storage speeds? Because obviously we've been told now with the M5 MacBook Pro, we are now running on the latest generation of PCIe for this one, where it was the last generation with the M4. This is why the bandwidth is quicker, and this is, means that the read-write speeds should be quicker, whereas the likes of the M4 Pro, that is still using that previous generation. So let's have a look at the read-write speeds that we got in Black Magic, And we can see right here that the M5 is actually ahead. It's actually getting faster read and write speeds right here. You know, we're getting the likes of 6,620 read speeds to 5,734 and 6,517 to 6,451 megabytes here. So really, yeah, the M5 is ahead, but not too much ahead, not leaps and bounds ahead. But when you do compare it to the previous generations of the M4, the M3, the M2, and the likes of the M1, that obviously, yeah, it does make a difference in what we actually have here. But obviously, not all of you guys are gonna be using this for GPU intensive tasks, CPU intensive tasks. Some of you might just be using this for the media engines in here. Maybe you're gonna be using things like Final Cut Pro, Premiere, or DaVinci, or other things out there. So what happens here then if we did an export of a 6K, 4K video? Well, I've done this on Final Cut Pro, and let's have a look at the chart. And again, as you can see, lower equals faster here, but look at the M4 Pro. It does this in 25 seconds, this six minute 4K video export. Whereas the M5 MacBook Pro, 
does it in 44 seconds. That is absolutely unbelievable. And compare that to the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4, it's 54. And even look down the bottom there, we've got the MacBook Air with the eight core GPU, the 256 gigabyte NAND storage, what was in that one, the baseline one, that's 89 seconds. That is a massive difference, what you have got there. But again, the M4 Pro rules here, and it's definitely worth it $400 more. So what we can take away from this end, for the majority of tasks, M4 Pro is way better than M5. Now, don't get me wrong, the M5 MacBook Pro is fantastic to get and it is a great buy, but that refurbished still for the one of the 12 core CPU and the 16 core GPU, costing just $100 more than this, and yet it's giving so much more performance. And I think one of the big reasons behind that is all to do with how many efficiency cores and performance cores we've got in CPU. Like I said, it's six efficiency cores, four performance cores in here, where we've only got four likes of efficiency cores. And then we've actually got eight, eight performance cores, double the amount that we've got in here, even though they are previous generations, it is giving you a far better result here. So what I am going to say right here, that if you can squeeze out an extra $100, I'd be buying the refurbished version of this personally over this machine here. Now that does mean you might lose out a little bit on battery life. And it also means that you might lose out on one year of support on your MacBook Pro potentially in the future. But because Apple still sell the M4 Pro and the M4 Max for the time being, you know, that support is going to be around for a long time to come. I still think, you know, you're going to get at least another five to six years support compared to, you know, six to seven years on this one. So that is still a long time. And for what you are getting for $100 more, this machine is still a lot better for the majority of tasks. I think the only scenario where this one beated it here was obviously almost on par was the likes of say gaming. And that was, you know, with Cyberpunk and I only did it with one game there, but obviously you saw the scores were very similar. But again, what I'm saying is for everything else, personally for a hundred dollars more here, I'd be buying this and not forgetting as well that you get more RAM inside of this too. This has got 16 gigabytes. This comes with a base amount of 24 gigabytes. That is also a steal on its own. You know, Apple to upgrade this RAM in this from 16 gigabytes to 24 is $200. This is $100 for that. And you get far more of a better machine inside of it. So in conclusion, I personally would be picking this over this, but that is just my opinion there. What do you guys think of this then? Would you pick the M4 Pro knowing this for $100 more or would you still buy yourself a MacBook Pro with an M5? Let me know in the comments below. And on that note as well, guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And as always, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.